tree decline on climate change without realizing that we're initiating weather modification programs across the United States, we're conducting atmospheric experiments that are going to cause the decline of our trees, in some cases already are. And the climate change we talk about, in other words, while we're warming, well, yes, but if we get rid of these man-made clouds from the jets, we're going to cool down because a clear sky allows the heat to radiate away from the earth. And that's what they're not telling you. But they say, well, we're going to fix. It's a chemical fix. It's not a cure, a solution. It's a fix to what we're seeing. Well, I don't want anybody fixing the climate, adding more pollutants and adding more problems for all of us, not for my family, not for your families. So this is what I'm trying to bring to you, is that this is what's going to happen on your dinner table and in your plate unless we take action, it's not like it's going to happen in some other country far away where it isn't going to be here to impact us. And that's why my message to you and why I go and speak. I'm making this presentation available because it's self-explanatory for some of it when you read it. And the documents, 40,000 strong photographs and photogra pictures, um, and these are government documents, these are studies. I try to put them forward so that people have leverage when they go to educate their elected officials. What I can say is that there are lobbyists paid in Washington. They live in Washington, they reside in Washington, they're in the halls of Congress because when I went there, I was accompanied by lobbyists going in and out of offices all the time of the people that you elect. Now these lobbyists are writing the legislation, these lobbyists are lobbying for their causes, whatever. Um, you know, in other words, it doesn't matter. But the American people are not in those offices lobbying. And what lobbyists provide is they say, I want you to support this project, this whatever. And then they give you all the research and all the information and they educate the staff members at the local level in, in your communities and they educate the staff members there. So what happens is that if the American people are objecting to it, they say, well, we believe or we think this is happening and they complain, but we're not lobbying on our own behalf to say, look, we have the evidence here. What are you going to do about this? We're not going down and educating them. We're not electing people at the local, state, and federal levels. We're complaining about what they do, but we're not going in and going and saying, look, if you want my vote, you have to do something about geoengineering. You have to, you, this is not going to pass. You have to speak out. And uh, John Fitzgerald, for example, is here today. He's running for Contra Costa County uh, U.S. Uh, House seat. And one of the things that I decided because I was looking on whether or not to support him was that I wanted to know what, where is he going to be on these issues? Does he know about geoengineering? Does he know about these atmospheric programs? Does he know about the weather modification and the tree decline? He came to my house, actually. And what happened was, because he wanted to know, he took a tree, to, he took a tree tour in Mendocino County with, with me. And when he looked at the tree decline and the dying of the trees and saw the, the photographs of them and saw them in person when we walked around the property and other areas, when he saw that, he said, look, he said, we have to do something about this. I get it. I get it that it isn't just my tree at my house, it's all over. So when you go to uh, Mendocino County, for example, you go up on, uh, go to uh, Little River, for example, or you go to Mendocino, for example, on, on Highway 1, and you drive by, you're going to see massive tree declines. You're going to see the Doug fir dying. They're standing trees. They're a fire hazard. They're dying all over the place. You're going to see the oaks, and not oaks with sudden oak death syndrome. You're going to see the pines that no longer have the strength to grow straight up toward the sun. But what they're doing is they, get, they start growing, and then when they get about 15, 20 feet high, they just bend over, and they're starting to lean on the trees next to them because they don't have enough energy to grow straight and tall and strong like we know them. It is the redwood trees that are in decline. Our beautiful redwood trees, the bark on redwood trees, you've all seen the pictures, you've seen them in person, the beautiful bark on the redwood trees, it's so beautiful, it's called redwood because it's the most gorgeous tree. 
and the most gorgeous bark. And when you see the painters and the, photo, the, the photographs of them, and you see them in person, they're stunning. And yet now, what we see is a white green mold on them, on the tree trunks. We see that they're dying from the top down in many cases. And they say, we don't know why. And we say, well, test the soil. Aluminum is in the soil. Could that be impacting them? We say, look, you're having man-made clouds. They're not getting the rainfall that they used to and the fogs that they used to. We're changing the climate. And they say, well, you know, it's just climate change, as if climate change meant climate change is not a word that we can't do something about. We can do something about climate change because we are modifying the weather. We're running weather modification programs all over the place. We're atmospherically making man-made clouds that in impact the weather, our trees, the climate. So this is the story that I bring to you. It's a positive story. It's a story that when we take action, we can make a difference. Um, my mother um, and my father fought having a nuclear power plant right off here on Point Arena. One of the make movers and shakers in Mendocino County that said, no, we don't want a nuclear power plant here. And the nuclear industry was saying, oh, well, we're going to make it into a park where people can go and visit and grow tr plants and trees. Some illusion that your property values would go up if you live next to a plant. So my mother said no, stood up to power. I have stood up to the end, and people ask me, well, are you afraid to stand up? And what I say is, no, I'm not afraid. I took, uh, we, a group of us um, in many states have taken on the US Navy, who intends to decimate 11.7 million marine mammals in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and right off here in your coast, the Navy is conducting warfare testing. And Congressman Mike Thompson in our district in Northern California and other and, and um, senators in other areas, uh, there's a letter in your packet which designates this information, but they won't stop the sonar and the bomb blasts and the electromagnetic weapons testing, even during the migrations of the blue whales and the gray whales and all the other animals. And when they talk about they're going to take 11 Point seven million marine mammals, it means that they're going to decimate them. And Barbara Boxer and Senator Feinstein did not hold public hearings on this issue. And the reason that they didn't is because they're going to sacrifice. They didn't even get a stop to the migration patterns for the salmon, nothing. So what happens is right off your coast from Southern California, there's the Southern California Northwest Training Range. There's the Northern California Training Range, which goes all the way from Northern California all the way up to Washington. And they're conducting Navy warfare. They're going to conduct a five-year program in the Gulf of Mexico. I have stood up to the Navy. I have spoken out. I have talked to their personnel. No one has ever harassed me. And we have delayed, fought. We're in another battle um, to stop it before the 12th of November. But here's the issue. No one has come to get me or bug my phones. They know who I am because they can go to my website and find out who I am. But I'm going to tell you, you can stand up to powerful agencies. You can get your elected officials engaged. And Congressman Thompson has been engaged on this issue to try to get them to protect the biologically sensitive areas for the fish we eat and other areas to protect the jobs of the, uh, to protect, um, jobs of the fishermen, um, essentially. So it's economic as well. So when we talk about all of these things, the dying of the trees, we talk about what's going on, all of these things, I'm going to skip a little bit because I've gone over some of this already. Um, the state of California water testing reveals lots of toxic chemicals in your drinking water. The information is free from your local water agency. They can tell you what the chemicals are. They're required to under the California Public Records Act at just barely the cost of copying. And they can also, you can also find out what's in every single public drinking water source. There's a document, um, an agency at the state of California, it's the State Department of Health Drinking Water Division. And they're the repository and it's online of every single drinking water test taken in the state of California going back to the 1970s. All this information is available to you. 
at your local level. It's available, but they don't want you to know what's going on. So I've listed some of the chemicals um, that we're finding, aluminum, strontium, beryllium, barium, iron, manganese. Um, there's a whole lot of things. The honeybee decline um, is going on, and we need to speak out on that issue about the neonicotinoids, which the uh, Bayer Crop Science, which brings you Bayer aspirin, has also said um, can affect honeybee larvae when the honeybee brings it, when uh, the honeybee brings the pollen back uh, to the um, uh, 